Welcome everybody to Dead Talk Live. I'm your host Viz, and tonight we welcome writer, director Nyla Inoshuk. Nyla, thank you so much for being here with us. Nyla's new movie is called Slashback. It is premiering in theaters, digital, and video on demand October 21st, which is tomorrow. Nyla, again, thank you so much for being here. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing well. Thank you. The movie, you the movie was, like we talked about before we got started, it was really good. I thoroughly enjoyed it. So let's get right into it. Um, the movie focuses on the Inuit indigenous people. How important was it to tell this story through the Inuit people? Yeah, well, I mean, I'm myself, I'm Inuk. This, uh, I grew up in Nunavut. So for me, it was more just about making a movie that felt both like the movies that I grew up watching, but also just um, reflective of this place that I grew up and loved. Awesome. Now, you worked... You picked a lot of first-time uh, kid actors to play out the major roles. And they are, I have to say, they make the movie, okay? Now, uh, how did you cast these kids for the particular roles that you put them in? Yeah, it was a really um, interesting process to try and find the cast and work with the cast. And I've been working with um with these actors for quite a few years now so it's been so nice to see them grow up with the movie um when i first started casting i knew that it was going to be a bit of a challenge because there's no casting agents in mm-hmm. nunavut um and so i essentially held these casting workshops i got a local actor christine tutu who is a friend of mine and um who ended up working in our props department actually and so we held these we invited young women out to come for acting workshops and uh i had these uh sides from the proof concept i was going to make a short film that essentially would give the tone and style of the Mm -hmm. movie in order to help get it financed and so um in the process of of doing these workshops i was trying different girls with each other and eventually found uh as some of the cast that would make up the the cast of the proof of concept. And then once we started moving forward with the the development of the movie, I worked a lot with the cast. Um, We would go out on boats, we'd go out to cabins, hang out and watch scary movies. And so um, they definitely influenced uh, the script in different ways as well. It sounds like you made it like a really fun environment for them. Once the camera started rolling and you spent all that time with them, did you find that they needed a lot of direction or did you sort of let them loose? It was such an interesting process. And and now talking with the girls, we all, uh, because it was the first time for me directing, it was the first time they had ever acted in a movie. So we were all learning so much in the process of of making the movie. And they even will say like, oh, I wish we could make the movie again because we feel like we would do such a better job. Like they were that they were getting better as as the movie was going along, uh, which I just think is so sweet. And um, so, yeah, it's been it's been so great to see uh, just them grow as actors and um, uh, and and just along the process um they they definitely um i would i wouldn't say that they necessarily um they definitely loosened up as actors Mm -hmm. but the 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 script was essentially what they what they stuck with as as we were shooting okay that makes perfect sense now uh micah is sort of one of the main character girls did i pronounce the name right micah mika micah now uh she's the one that sort of you know disregards the culture you know it's all folklore it's all fake i want to get out of this town while some of the other girls are the complete opposite what were you trying to depict with how some girls felt as opposed to others? Yeah, I definitely felt like when I was growing up um, as an indigenous 
teenager, you're when you're a teenager, you're trying to figure out mm -hmm. who you are and where you fit in and and where your indigeneity fits into that. And I definitely noticed when I was hanging out with the the, the teenage cast that some of that shame would just be reflected in the way that they would speak about themselves. Yeah. Um, and that some of that shame would affect the dynamics of the friendships as well. Um, one of the some one of the things that sometimes would come up is they say, "Oh, that's so inuk," and they mean it in a negative way. Yeah. And then we would have a conversation. We'd say, "Oh, what do you mean by that? What do you mean when you say, oh, that's so inuk?" And and then it would, um, and then we would talk about the importance of you know trying to use prideful language when we're talking about where we come from and and our inukness because even if you know we might not um, be at that point yet, that our goal is to be proud indigenous women warriors as we see at the end of the <laughs> film as well now as i was watching this film it's very hard not to draw the comparison to john carpenter's the thing okay you got near the arctic circle you've got aliens you've got aliens mimicking people so what if any role did the thing play in your direction um i i grew up loving horror and, and sci-fi. And so I definitely drew a lot of inspiration from different movies that I grew up loving. Um, I would say the biggest inspiration that the thing um, had on the movie was really with the practical effects. Mm -hmm. um, I love the the effects of it, in, in the thing. And and we also, me and the cast, we love that movie too. Then the night before we actually shot um, we shot our first day. We had a sleepover and we were all living together in school and we had a little sleepover and we watched the movie together and ate so much junk food. Um, and so it was definitely something that that was uh, just a, a reference for us. And mm -hmm. obviously one of the characters references the movie in the in the script. And um, but for me, it was really fun to kind of give uh, a nod to um a classic creature work yeah a classic in the horror industry absolutely now is uh, this is an alien movie i mean like we talked about there it's an alien now is the alien sort of a monster in the inuit folklore or does everybody realize by the end of the film that this is not part of our folklore this is not part of our history this is something from another planet it doesn't belong yeah. here I kind of wanted to, I wanted to play it as aliens. Okay. Um, I, I also, what I love about being in the Arctic is that we do have all of these stories and creatures that exist within our, our traditional stories and that we have, um, I mean, just with all cultures have children's stories that are mm -hmm. cautionary tales in the Arctic, it's just very, very dangerous. There's lots of things that are scary. So we, our children's stories are really terrifying. So we have lots of different creatures that will steal children if you get too close to cracks in the ice yeah. or if you wander off alone. Um, and so uh, just kind of growing up in a place where you have, you kind of have all of these creatures that exist or you have um, elders that will tell you about their experiences with these creatures when they were younger. It just kind of creates this um, sense of mystery. Yeah. And, and um, so kind of having having those as, um, you know, just having it set in this, in a place like this and and then having those as almost red herrings. Was and, kind of fun. and that stretches through almost every culture, stories like that. It's to keep children yeah. basically away from doing stuff they're not supposed to. Exactly. Now, now, what kind of challenges were presented to you shooting near the Arctic Circle? I mean, you could tell it was the middle of summer, I assume, I hope. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but still, the snow, was it challenging? Yeah, so I've shot in the Arctic in the wintertime, and that was crazy. So I was like, never, <laughs> let's not do that. Um, and... And it's also so beautiful in the summer with the 24 hour sunlight and, and it's not a kind of a, a version of the Arctic that I think people are familiar with. Mm -hmm. um, but it definitely, we have been told by 
producers that they had scouted this community and that it was impossible to film there. And it, it was basically true. Uh, we, we learned, but it was, this is a really special community to me. Um, uh, Hollywood is the capital. It's there's been movies that have been shot there mm -hmm. um, a couple of times, but there it, um, I'm from a, a, as one of these small communities of that are fly in communities, about 1500 people. And my nephews are from Pang, which is they're five and seven, and you know, and the idea and and Pang itself is just one of the most beautiful places I've ever yeah. been. It's a tiny, uh, remote community nestled in the middle of these gigantic mountains, mm -hmm. these fjords carved by glaciers, and so um, it, to be able to film in this place was was something that I just thought would be so special. Um, but it's got a million challenges that it's, it's really, really expensive to get to. So that, there's that, but then also, um, it just, there's, there's not enough housing for the people that live there. So wow. for us to kind of bring in a crew and be this imposition in the summertime, and then all the food comes in, in on planes, uh, cargo planes mm -hmm. that kind of, that are also passenger planes, but it's, um, it, the, the amount of food that's brought up to the community is like based on like the people that live there. So we would also be imposing on the food supply. And then the, the, the there are these ships that come in with food in the summer, but we'd be there early. So that's actually at the time when there's like the least amount of food in town and all the prices are really expensive. So it was, um, so we had to kind of figure out ways to be flying in our own, our own food as well. Yeah. But um, I went to, the principals at both of the the public school and the high school and i asked if we could move in and so essentially as soon as classes were done we shipped up 60 beds and mattresses and turned all the classrooms into uh like, like housing dormitories yeah yeah and it was 24 hour sunlight so we're having to like black out the windows <laughs> and we've got these like professional crew people who are like um, coming up and then everybody gets a roommate and um, living in a school, all of our meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner is served in the, in the high school gym because there's no restaurants in town. And um, it was, uh, but the kind of people that sign up for something like that are really amazing. And oh, so yeah. we had this really incredible crew. Um, the cast had an awesome time. It sounds uh, like you guys just had an amazing time. Now, when it came to how you were going to show the alien to the audience, is that something you wrestled with uh, before you ended up with what we actually see? Yeah, um, it was. That was a really fun process, and it kind of was something. Um, I mean, making movies is such a collaborative thing. Mm -hmm. You get to work with some really incredible artists and people that are really talented what they do and i think making movies is really special because it just like that i do think it's more fun yeah. and so to kind of figure out what the creatures would how they would work that was something that me and my co-writer figured out in terms of like we knew they they were going to be creatures made up of tentacles and they would take over the bodies of animals and wear their skins as disguises so that was like this kind of fun thing to figure out with ryan and then getting to work with troy james this incredible contortionist when we were i was like how do you get them to to move like how yeah. old they move? and troy he can just do the craziest things with his body um it really is double jointed in every joint and so working with him to kind of figure out what the movement would be and then we had Ophelio who was um who did more of the stunt heavy stuff um, and then whenever there was two creatures at that in skin suit needed at once, then they would both be be on screen together. Um, and then getting to work with these like really awesome nerds in the to make the VFX and all the tentacles and all of that stuff was like this fun, fun um, creative thing that we got to do after it was all done. What was so really it, it was really fun at, at different stages. What was really fun is seeing when these aliens were trying to imitate these human beings. Like the aliens, they just stumbled upon this planet. They have no idea about us, but they're trying to imitate our movements. And I got to tell you when the uh people are being in were infected by the alien and we see how they look, that also reminded me of like Leatherface and Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre. Was that done intentionally? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, I loved um, growing up. I I loved like Ed Gein and and all of the inspiration it was drawn from him. I I love Psycho and yeah. and um, Leatherface, of course. And and also what I loved about Leatherface also was that he walked around in daylight. Yeah. Um, which was which was fun. And so getting to kind of like play with play with a lot of those things was um, was. Uh, really fun and and um, getting to then have the actors and and Natak who played the fisherman who gets killed is kind of like a indigenous acting royalty to us and so to get to have play with him and like turn him into a monster was really fun. <laughs> now uh, this is your di- your feature film directorial debut. After it was all said and done with, was the experience what you expected it to be doing your first full feature film? Oh my gosh, it was not at all what I thought it would be. I think that if I had known, um, it was it was a million lessons a day that I was learning. I think that if I I um, knew what how crazy it was to make a movie, I think I would have probably chosen a, a, a less bonkers movie to start with. But I'm so it, I'm so grateful to to the experience and and you know the, I'm so proud of the cast and and what we were able to do. But it really was like. Um, such a crazy um, uh, experience and uh, so many, so many lessons learned. And it just, but it's in an exciting way. It kind yeah. of was like, okay, when I, as soon as I was finished, I was like, that's how you make a movie. I'm ready to do it now. Yeah. Let's go. And I kind of still am feeling that kind of like, okay, what, how can we take the lessons that we learned from this and just try and get better the next time. Putting that first one in the can and ready to go. I mean, it must be just a huge relief. Uh, now you did not shy away from special effects in this movie. Uh, I don't know what the budget was, but regardless, you used whatever budget you had very effectively. Uh, there was definitely no lack of blood. The We got a great view of the aliens themselves, the whole leather face masks, the polar bear that was infected. That was great. Uh, was it all practical effects or was there any CGI? Yeah, it was kind of a mix of both. And we, this was not a big budget movie, mm-hmm. so we were really just stretching whatever we could do. Um, and I, but I also love the the look of practical effects and even the campiness of some of the practical effects. So with the bear, I actually had we um, this full bear suit made for Troy <laughs> to wear, but he has to wear it backwards, like a walking backwards mm-hmm. and upside down. It was like really uncomfortable for him, and it looked so crazy and really cool. Um, but crazy. <laughs> it was. It was. And so, and so we did replace some of the bear with CG with CG elements, but matched the kind of wackiness of the movements. Mm-hmm. Um, and so then, um, and then in different in in um, kind of in, it certainly enhanced some blood with extra blood, and and then um, added in some added in some all the tentacle stuff with cg and uh, very nicely done it was i gotta admit very very nicely done one final question before we go uh are you glad and happy i mean i'm i know you're glad and happy you made this film but about you know showing the world the inuit people who had no idea about the inuit people and what their life was like and their warriors and their customs and their folklores how do you feel about that yeah, I think it's great. I mean, I think that there we there's not a ton of Inuit, and we are way up at the top of the world. And I think that there is. Um, so I've I've realized that not a lot of people are familiar with mm-hmm. with, you know, what we're all about, and that uh, that also that they might think that we exist in this time long ago. And so yeah. it's been. Um, I, I've gotten some comments about. Um, how modern the girls are. And I think so it's what's been kind of funny to me is I, it, it never occurred to me to kind of make a period piece or anything like that. But it was uh, this kind of realization that people aren't necessarily familiar with seeing indigenous uh, teenagers in this kind of modern context. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that, I think that's been great. I think it's, it's um, and it's been so nice for my cast to be able to, um, 
just grow with the movie. I mean, and, and be really proud of it and be able to be proud of where they come from and share that with different audiences. A little bit off topic, but I was watching a documentary not too long ago and the Inuit people, which like started in Siberia, they were like the first to cross over into North America. Uh, so there, there's a lot of history there, and I, I'm glad it's that it's really interesting. You can see people in in like northern Russia that looks so much like yeah, my aunt. <laughs> absolutely, it was great, Nyla. You did a fantastic job. Thank you so much for coming on here again, Thank guys. You. The movie is called Slash Pack. It is available October 21st in theaters, digital, and on demand. So be sure to check it out. This movie is great. Great story. Great acting. Great directing, and it's gonna really impress you with the amount of special effects and the and the horror element and everything else. Do you have any final thoughts you want to share before we go? No, thank you so much. Absolutely, it was total fun. On behalf of Nyla and myself, I want to thank our audience who tuned in live, and those of you who'll be watching this later on. Stay safe and stay walking, everybody. Bye bye.